George Miller is back in the Mad Max world with Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. This is the highly anticipated prequel film to Mad Max Fury Road, and I am so excited to tell you that it lives up to the hype. It is just as good as Fury Road. I think some might even argue it is better than Mad Max Fury Road. I'm tinkering on that, and that comes from someone who thinks Fury Road is like top three action films of all time. But one of the biggest complaints about that film is, you know, no, to some people, there's not really a story. It's go here, come back. It's a giant car chase, and I loved every freaking minute of it. But it seems George Miller kind of took that response, came back, and delivers not just the best story in the Mad Max world yet, but honestly might have delivered the best prequel ever made. And I've been running through my mind of how many other great prequels that we've had and how they influence and add on to an already amazing movie and Furiosa does all of that and more while building up Furiosa to what might be the best character in the Mad Max world. And again, that says a lot because Mad Max has been built up for a lot of different movies. But with that said, this is a non-spoiler review for Furiosa. If you are worried about that, I will not be spoiling this film. I'm going to talk about it as vague as possible. Definitely leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like subscribe button. And while this is an early review, do look out for my ranking of the Mad Max films the week of release. Now, with that said, if you don't know what Furiosa is about, and this maybe is your first Mad Max film jumping in, first off, you'll be completely fine. I love how it builds up the mythology in this world. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But this is about Furiosa, who is snatched from the green place of many mothers. Young Furiosa falls into the hand of a great biker horde led by the warlord Dementis. Sweeping through the wasteland, they come across the citadel presided over by the immortal Joe. As the two tyrants fight for dominance, Furiosa soon finds herself in a non-stop battle to make her way home. Just to start off with the obvious, both of them are fan Fantastic. I actually might go a second layer to say that this is their best performance yet, which might be kind of like mind blowing to some of you because there's been a lot of headlines talking about how many lines Anya Taylor Joy actually has as Furiosa. It's less than Max had in Fury Road. And honestly, for me, I've never been worried about that because Anya Taylor Joy, one of the greatest presents about her and her performances is the way that she can express so much with just the glare of her two eyes. And for me, watching Furiosa, you can see that per side over here in so many different avenues where, again, this might be my favorite performance of hers. Hands down, this is the best performance of Chris Hemsworth as well. And it actually makes me look at like the lineup of Avengers, the main six that we got in that first film and I know a lot of people have talked about like great career movements after the Avengers and after what they've been doing and I have to say while Chris Hemsworth is still in the MCU when it's all said and done I think we might look at him as the best actor out of these specifically in his resume and what he's able to accomplish and as Dementis he is an incredible villain one that's easy to understand one that steals the show almost steals the show per se and is just grand in his entrance i loved how chris hemsworth played him and he really fell in and camouflaged into the role it was glorious and alongside that i just want to jump back to anya taylor joy for a second so freaking good really such a great addition to what charlize theron had done as furiosa back in fury road and it's really this great tidal wave of performances of both these actresses. I do actually want to shout out one other person. That is Aliyah Brown, which I do not see a lot of people mentioning, but she actually plays the youngest version of Furiosa that we meet from the start. And she is incredible in here. Again, talking about the performances of acting with your eyes, she doesn't say a lot. So that is really the core moment and performance of it. And if you don't have Aliyah Brown's performance in here, no way in hell will that influence and add on to what Anya Taylor-Joy is about. Even when you look at Charlize Theron, all three of these performances line up in such a perfect way that there is no, oh, I don't believe that that's Furiosa. No, you believe it all the way through, which again adds on to Fury Road now. now. Now when I go back and watch Fury Road, I'm going to get this different type of experience because I know the entire backstory that led up to those moments. And that's where I just want to say again, this might be the best prequel ever made. And it is something that is interesting because I remember when Fury Road ended, while I love Furiosa, I didn't really clamor to go back. I wanted to keep going forward. 
And I always wondered, what is this story that George Miller has that is like he has to tell this next in the Mad Max world? Not give us another Mad Max film, but give us a Furiosa-centric movie. And after seeing the movie, I, I get why. Like, Fury Road, like, I, I showed my wife it for the very first time, and one of her biggest complaints to that film was, it does just feel like it throws you into it all. And I feel that a majority of Mad Max films really do just throw you in, doesn't really explore the wasteland itself, give or take for some things in, like, Road Warrior and, the, of course, the original, but... They really do just throw you in, kind of give you a basic surface level attempt at what's going on, where are people at, but Fury Road really is the one that just revs, starts, and it's basically a chase from start to finish with a couple slow moments in between, but really just that's enough time to gas up the car again, per se, and Furiosa isn't afraid to take its time telling a story, but it never feels like a second or a minute is wasted. For a two and a half hour runtime, the film flies by at such a fast and immaculate pacing that by the time I like checked the time and I saw that I only had like 30 minutes of the movie left, I felt a little depressed inside because I just wanted it to keep going. I love living in this world and seeing all the different experiences that these characters thrive in. But at the same time, it just felt like perfect pacing. And the way that Miller actually broke up the chapters of the film, it's broken into like six chapters, I think, maybe seven. And the way that it kind of just breaks it up and tells a story really relays back to what the Mad Max world is all about. And that's folk tales in the wasteland. And in a way, this is the folk tale of Furiosa and how she came to be the Furiosa that we meet in Fury Road and all the different attempts. And again, makes you now understand Fury Road a little bit more. If you were confused by Fury Road's story, if you're confused about the world, they Miller doesn't just express and dive into Furiosa's backstory, but it dives a little bit into the mythology of everything. The Citadel, Gun City or Bullet City, Gasoline Town, all these different things. And I found that to be one of the strongest avenues of this because I'm a big proponent of mythology in films and when you can dive in and build upon it. And sometimes films go a little bit too far out there that feels, you know, okay, now you're ruining some of the mystery because I don't need to know everything. This really just adds a nice little layer to everything in Fury Road that I think is gonna interest a lot of other people. Anyone who had those complaints with the original film Fury Road, I think now we're gonna watch this film and be like, oh, Okay, that's awesome to know. And if they were to watch Furiosa, then Fury Road right after, it's a great and fantastic double feature, and it's actually gonna be the core way that I go forward with watching Fury Road. It's gonna have to be both side by side. Those are the things that just blow my mind away with what they're able to accomplish in the film, and specifically from a storytelling perspective. And I love how it builds and ramps up for you to understand where this story is going. From the very first frame of when you see Furiosa to the very last, it all ties together perfectly. And it's also all shot incredibly well. The cinematography in here is just per. And one of the things that I remember a lot of people complaining about when the first trailer came out for Furiosa is how glossy it looked, how visual effects heavy it looked. And I have to say, like, I remember seeing that. I remember seeing the first trailer. But this looks a little bit even more realistic than I think Fury Road did. Fury Road had the, still a little bit of gloss to it, and I just got done rewatching it as well. And to now watch this film, it feels like... Like, again, George Miller took those complaints and kind of stormed away with them. Maybe some of the set pieces aren't as grand as and as big as Fury Road. Speaking about those, I love the visual effects. I love the practical stuff in here. I love the cinematography. And, of course, everyone's going to want to know, well, how is the action? Now, I can say this. Furiosa overall is a different beast of an action movie than Fury Road is. Fury Road is, like, non-stop, and I love that for it. But Furiosa is one of those films that the action isn't as big and as grand as per se Fury Road, like specifically like even when they went through the storm, like there's nothing that goes to those big lengths. But what I found was a little bit more stronger in here was how much more brutal and visceral some of the action sequences were in here. Since the cars are such more like close combat, it feels specifically in some of the chases and then even some of the gunshots, 
I really like how they played that off. And while there, again, is not as much action as Mad Max Fury Road, there is just enough to propone and push you forward. But you're going to be locked into the story of Furiosa just enough to, like, that's not even going to be a worry. But do not expect big and grand as epic as Fury Road. I think that's a completely different beast. And I think this is a great setup for it all. But all the action in here top tier perfect there was one moment in particular that i didn't see coming and when it came up i actually like verbally said out loud in the theater oh man I actually try to catch myself specifically in like press screenings because i don't want to be that like annoying a-hole in the theater and specifically where everyone's trying to be quiet and like pay attention to the movie but like i viscerally had to say that out loud because of how into it i was but the reason that all of this works and everything I just mentioned is because of George Miller's creative mind and what he was able to accomplish with Furiosa. He took every single second and minute and brought it together. And as a director and someone who's supposed to orchestrate everything, the work in harmony, the visual effects, the editing, the performances, the storytelling, you can totally and completely see why this absolutely might be Miller's favorite accomplishment in his entire career and might be his crescendo. Like, if this were to be his final movie he was ever to make, and I know he still wants to make another Mad Max movie, and probably others, I would say, bravo. This is your swan song, this is your standing ovation, which he just got at Cannes, and this is, like, his bowing out, I would say, I get it. Ways I feel like he actually wanted to make Furiosa before Mad Max Fury Road. Like, just watching this, like, it feels like this was what he was always aiming to get to. And I, I still cannot believe what I just experienced. Furiosa is one of those magical experiences that you can only have in the theater ever so often. And it is one that I'm gladly wanting to go back to. It is one that I continue to now think about. And I'm going to be, like, obsessed with it and telling my wife about it and telling my friends about it. And I, I didn't think Dune Part 2 could be defeated as my number one of the year. But, like, right now, it's tied. Like, I, I'm just so in love with this fucking movie. Like I've said, I'm just flat-out speechless. And I was almost in tears by the incredible and immaculate masterpiece that Furiosa is. An epic revenge story drenched in gasoline, gore, dust, and most importantly, the phenomenal creativity of George Miller's mind. Anya Taylor-Joy and Chris Hemsworth's best performances yet are in this, and Furiosa truly might be the best prequel ever created. And if I were to say any more, I would give away spoilers. This one isn't just for the Mad Max fans. This one is for action junkies. And this one is for people who watched Fury Road and may have said, you know, I like it. I appreciate it. But I would have liked a little bit more story. This one has it. It is out there as just an absolute wasteland of an epic. And I cannot wait to see it again. So all that said, I'm going to give Furiosa a Mad Max Saga an A+. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. Head over to my podcast, Into the Geekverse, on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. And of course, until next time, stay classy.